It is? It is good news. Thank you. Somebody else? It is good news? Somebody else? Because we are talking about the first angel's message, fear God, give him glory, for the hour of judgment has come. And today we are looking at worship, uh, worship he who made heaven and earth. So that's what we are looking at. So the hour of judgment, we, we did all those calculations, the 2,300 uh, days, which are years. But of course, the, take, the major issue is that the judgment is on and we need to do what is expected of us. We are supposed to obey, we are supposed to do the will of God because the judgment is on. Uko upandegani. So today we are looking at worshiping the creator. Now, just in a nutshell, we are talking about worship. Worship is reverence to God or allegiance to God and here we are being reminded that we need to worship but who are we worshiping worshiping the creator that is the main focus and the whole gospel or the good news or this bible right from genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning god made heaven and earth that already presupposes worship given that god is the one who made heaven and earth he's the only one who is supposed to be worshipped revelation at the end of it all the three angels message that is what it is focusing on worshipping god worshipping the creator by the way the great controversy is about nothing other than worship the trouble started in heaven whereby Satan did not want to give allegiance to God and worship God. He wanted that worship to go to him. And down here, right from the creation or the fall of man, it is about worship. Look at the prophets through the Bible. They are calling people back to worship the true God and keep off the idols. Worship and worship is the main focus and for today, it is important we understand what or how is this worship supposed to be who are we supposed to worship and what are the characteristics of this god whom we are going or we are supposed to worship so that at the end of it all we bring it down to our lives so that uh, we know who we are worshiping and how it should be done now in life some years back or many years back, when I was younger, I used to wonder. I used to think about God and wonder now. God made everything. Supposing God was not there, of course God is eternal. He has been and he will forever be. Amen? Supposing God was not there. Can you imagine a state of nothingness? whereby there is nothing. Okay, of course it contradicts the whole aspect of God being the creator. So then, and the, the, the lesson is just making us think. Think about children. When children see parents, they assume those parents have been there and they will always be there. And for us, when we look around, we look at the sun, we see the moon, we may take things for granted. How many times do we pause to think about who made these things? And the solution of the issue today, we are being reminded that God is the one who made everything. God is the creator and the universe exists because God is our creator and everything in it. And given that he is the creator, then we are supposed to worship him because he is the source, the beginning and the end of everything. And when we look at our Bibles, let's read the, the memory text. The memory text. The memory text is uh, Revelation chapter 4. Verse or I'll just read the verse the way it is in the lesson. It says, you are worthy, O Lord, 
to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by you and by your will they exist and were created. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, by your will they exist and were created. So the focus still is in this verse that it is only God who is worthy to be praised, to be worshipped because he is the creator of everything. Unfortunately, in this world, as much as God created everything right, Satan comes in and trouble starts, tribulations start. And you find that in this life, challenges are there. The revelator, the writer of Revelation, John, he was in the island of Patmos, and he was there because he was there out of the tribulations for worshipping the true God. And John, in Revelation, has a challenge, and God, or Jesus, visits John in Patmos. And God encourages John being there because John says he's a companion. He's a companion in time of tribulation. And if we look at um, John chapter 16, verse 33, John chapter 16, verse 33 says that in this world you will have tribulations, but we are supposed to be of good cheer because God has uh, conquered the world. So as much as God has created us, the focus is reminding us that as much as there is trouble, just the way John was at Patmos and God was there with him, visiting him, encouraging him, revealing to him the things which were to pass, we are in a similar situation. And this is a message about the God we are worshipping, the creator, the God who is our companion in time of tribulation. There is an encouragement which we are getting, that in time of trouble, which as long as we are in this world, as long as the great controversy is there, trouble will always be, but what is the encouragement? What is the hope about the God we are worshipping, our creator? He is always there and he will always be with us and he will always uh, provide for us. Think about our speaker for the day has just highlighted some of the challenges which are there in our, our lives as ladies, as families, family problems, national problems. As we are speaking, we are talking about the current issue to do with uh, religion, worshipping. We are talking about the Shakahola massacre. In fact, it is not just Shakahola, it is now Ahora, Shakahora. By yesterday or the other day, 150 bodies had been retrieved and still more graves are being identified. Those are some of the challenges of people who have been cheated into wrong ideologies. But we thank God that we are talking about a true God who teaches us how to worship. So God is there for us. We should be encouraged. The God we worship is very near. The way he visited John is the same way he will visit us. And of course, the issue of creation. It is only by believing in God the creator that we have a true meaning in life. It is through believing in God the creator that we have a reason to live and a reason, something to live for and something to fight for. So uh, that is just the bit that um, just made uh, an introduction about uh, the fact that we should worship God, the creator, the maker of heaven and earth, and the fact that he is our companion and he is close to us, and through the creation story, or through the fact that God is our creator, he gives us meaning, and of course the false theories of evolution may not give us meaning. We are here because of our God. So remember this lesson, we are going to look at the type of God we are worshipping. So at this moment, I will invite my sister Margaret, 
uh, so that he can tell us, I mean she can tell us more about this God who we worship, the creator, and what type of, uh, or, and how this God is continuing to be close to us. So my sister, Margaret, welcome. Uh, thank you, Sister Modesta, for the invitation. We are looking at what you have been told in the Bible that we worship the Creator. Here we are not worshiping any other person. Kina mama hatuja ito ya tuende shakahola kwa sawa kuna Paul Mackenzie, kwa sawa tumesongwa na shida. We don't have a call to follow Ezekiel. Neither are we being told to go and follow uh, Jesus of Tongarin. No, we are called to worship the Creator. And that is the clarion call that we see from the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. In Kiswahili, when we read uh, the book of Revelation, Ufnuwa wa Yohana kuminane, tuanzie fungo lake la sita, inasema, kisha nikaona malaika mwingine, akiruka katikati ya mbingu, mwenye njili ya milele, awahubiri hao wakao juu ya ninji, na kila taifa, na kabila, na luga, na jamaa. Aujume ni gani? Akasema kwa sauti kuu fungu la saba, mcheni mungu, na kumtukuza kwa maana saa ya hukumu yake imekuja. Msujudieni ye ya liye zifanya mbingu na nchi, na bahari, na chemchemi za maji. So that is the clarion call. The, the book of Revelation ends like that. We are all called to worship the Lord. At a time as this, when we have scientific ideas, we have the theory of evolution, which denies the existence of God. We also have some other confusing theologies that have come about, that we have men that we can follow as Christ. We are being invited to worship the true God. And what is guiding us to understand the true God? When we look at this clarion call in the book of Revelation, we find that its foundation is in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 where it is saying in the beginning God created. So we are to worship this kind of a God who created everything we see, both the visible and the invisible things. We have the clarion call to worship this God who has unlimited powers. Friends, the men that we are, that we are following to worship the, the Mackenzie we have talked about, they don't have these unlimited powers. They are just following what Satan is giving them, the evil spirit with them. But the God whom we are called to worship has unlimited powers. Let us see one of the things that God has created. God has created the sun. And this sun can be able to offer a lot of energy compared to the, the, the oil even the gas that you have made as human beings, um, even the fire that we do, God has given us the sunlight. That is the sun that is all over the world. It is global. This kind of a God that we are called to worship, he is the God who created the heavens and the earth. The, the, the kind of Jesus who are, uh, who are calling us to, to, to worship him, they have not created anything. Then, the kind of a God we are called to worship, he is ever present, he is all over. He is with you here at uh, Kusida Church, he is, with, he is with everyone wherever he is, globally, he is ever present in the entire world. And uh, this kind of, the kind of a God we are called to worship, he will never forsake his people in the world, he never forsakes. With Mackenzie and the rest, if you don't have enough tithes and the offerings, you will be told to go away. We have seen churches where people lie down and they are given strokes. They are canned because they didn't come with the offerings. I think you have seen that on, uh, on media. But the kind of a God that we are called to worship is a God where you come here, you are not beaten. Friends, 
don't be cheated to follow any other God apart from the God who created the heavens and the earth. Mungu ambaye anatufahamu. Anajua hata idadi ya nywele zilizo katika vichwa vyetu. Sasa wakati mwingine unaambiwa hebu muabudu Mungu huyu ambaye anatufahamu. Mtu aliyo hospitalini ambaye anaugua anaambiwa uko na kansa. Unaona unamwambia worship this God. Unamwambia mama ambaye amedhoofika afya yake hana pesa ni umaskini na kila kitu alafu namwambia he is a god who is very close friends he is a god that is very close to us asubuhi tuliimba tukasema chochote atakachoniletea nitakipokea na sitanungunika that is the kind of a god that who is very close to us i want you to look at these instances in the bible and we are, we are going to realize that the God who has been mentioned in the Bible is the same God that we shall worship today. He is the God that delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. And when we see him, we see the children of Israel in the wilderness. They don't have food to eat. They don't have water. He is the God that provided. He provided them with manna. Actually, the manna came down as rain and they could collect it they didn't lack. Despite the challenges that they went through the wilderness, still God was very close to them. He guided them. Then I saw God uh, during the walls of Jericho as they built. It was God who was present and he led the walls of Jericho to fall. And um, uh, I, I, saw, uh, I saw the Israelites being surrounded by enemies. It was God that defeat, uh, defeated the enemies of the Israelites and the Israelites could have victory. So what are we saying today? When we read the book of Psalm 139 from 15 to 18, but for your homework, go and read the book of Psalm uh, chapter 139 from verse 1, you continue. Is the Lord that knows even when we were formed in our mother's womb. So it says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. The Lord that was aware, when you are being formed, when your bones were being formed in your mother's womb, is the same God that we are serving today, who is an ever-present God. So he is very close. Let nobody cheat you that he is not an ever-present God. He's very close to us. And um, um, he is God, I, I saw in the lesson that, Though the Lord dwells in a high and holy place, he also is with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. He is with us. So long as you choose to follow him, here now it is a matter of choice. He is there. And I saw this God, that his greatness and power are so vast everywhere. He doesn't dwell on the KU here only. He, he, he is with everyone. He understands us. So we don't have any reason as to why we should follow other wrong teachings. Let us all come back. My sisters, we have our children here, our sons and our daughters, and we have our uh, little children there. It's a clarion call that let us come and worship this true God because after all, he is our creator. We are proud of him. We are happy with him because he understands us. And may God bless you. Amen. Asante sana, asante sana, Sister uh, Margaret, kwa kutupatia uh, hizo highlights. Na nata, naongea tu kwa kiswahili uh, kidogo uh, sababu kuna wengine pengine waelewi Kiingereza kabisa lakini tumeona kuwa Mungu ni Mungu ambaye ako karibu nasi wakati wa shida Mungu ni Mungu muumbaji na pia ni Mungu ambaye yuko karibu sana nasi wakati huu nitamuita pastor uh, Mary ili naye aweze kutuelekeza Tuweze kujiuliza kuna uhusiano gani baina ya injili, hukumu na uumbaji. Na pia, Yesu alitufia msalabani. 
inalenga aje uh, mambo ya kuabudu karibu dada Asante sana kiongozi just a quick one it is interesting to understand how God is working in this world despite the challenges that we face daily interestingly this week I have been facing a lot of uh, it was a very hectic week for me we lost one of our closest friend and uh, in a very mysterious death the last statement that he made before he uh, he died he said i'm starting to wonder whether i am under god's judgment and exactly for what reason i don't know we are living in an era that when judgment is talked and when judgment people talk of judgment it becomes as a threat to us and i like the response that one of our ladies said there that last week's lesson told us how judgment is a good news to us but unlike how the bible gives it most of our people when we talk of judgment sometimes it comes to us as a threat but i want to confirm you to confirm to you church that things are not the same as the world thinks the world may think judgment is a threat but as a christian we have a hope that god has given unto us and the interesting question that we should ask ourselves we know as a church we understand that we are saved by grace but when we come to the judgment why god is he, is he concerned about judging us with works and that is why when introducing the uh, the topic that gospel judgment and creation we ought to understand as a church that judgment is attached with the gospel nothing else because when we took we, we take judgment is uh, it, it is attached with the the salvation then the, the, there is where we go wrong the work of salvation is purely what christ is doing but the work of the, the work of judgment it is exactly we as a people the good news has come to us and the good news is that jesus saves the good news to us we know that jesus forgives our sins but again when we talk of salvation we ought to understand it is the work that christ is doing for us nothing else and this should give us hope i thank the the, the ones who have uh, done it before because uh, i had my reader was saying at the end of the, uh, at the end of today we are looking forward at least our burden will be lightened but as for me also i continue to say i pray that the end of this sabbath all our burden will be laid unto jesus because the moment we understand it is not our power there is nothing we can do in our power the, the reason why i i was saying i was sad this week the, the case of that mysterious death that happened unto us you came to realize we are people who know god what he does in our life but when temptation sometimes come we don't understand and we don't reflect the love of god and that is why he is talking of the uh, how to worship god the creator you know when christ created man and again they rebelled against god god never abandoned the creation and this is where we go wrong sometimes we come to understand as a people when we are going through tribulation we forget that god the creator is the one who is taking care of us and the moment we understand this there is nothing that will will burden your soul hakuna kitu ambacho kitakacho umiza roho yako today even in the economic world it is showing us we, we are not even heading somewhere which is better the things are getting worse each day the things are getting in worse each day but what is our hope our hope that we have in glory is that when you go to the book of Colossians Colossians chapter number 1 and verses number 13 i just want to paraphrase uh, the bible talks of true believer have been transferred from the darkness to light we have been transferred from slavery to freedom we have been transferred from guilty to forgiveness and we have been transferred from the power of sin to the power of jesus christ praise god you know one of the things that makes me to 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 be happy and to enjoy the christian life is that you are not walking alone the, the whole of uh, this chapter uh, this this lesson of uh, this quarter is this trying to show us with christ victory that is what we are guaranteed it is not by your power when you look back at your life some of us we have lived a very messy life 
But because of the Christ victory, that is what is bestowed unto us. And that is why you see, there is something that the writer was mentioning. Having this gospel, the good news of salvation, as a church, Seventh-day Adventist church, God has raised us in this right, last day's event, and we must not forget that our name itself, it is a declaration of something. And that declaration of the word Seventh-day Adventist church, it is that it is Christ's gospel, and his second coming. Our name is not just like any other name. The, my, 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 the one who talked before me, they are talking of the, the, the worship that has been done here in the country. You, you have heard of the ministries. But our name, it is very, very unique such that the moment it is mentioned, oh my friend, yani, umewa isikia kwa, kwa hata kwa mta. Wanasema ya kwamba, eh, wa Adventista nao. Yani, ukienda tu ujiintroduce wewe tu ni mwa Adventista. Ata huitaji kuambia wewe ni nani. They keep quiet, they listen to you. And, and this is the reality. Because our name is a declaration that there is something. And that is uh, the gospel of the good news and the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, as a people we want to understand, God is calling us to worship him. If you look in the book of Genesis, it introduces him in the very first chapter. In the beginning, God created. When we are finishing the, 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 the chapter, that is in the book of Revelation, then he calls us to worship him. Why? Because he created us. And when we understand this, that God never abandoned his creation just because they rebelled against him. Look at your life. Most of the times that we rebel against God, someone asked, when I went through seminary, there was this lecturer who was very much, uh, he, 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 he just wanted to talk much of sin. And he was saying, as a church we believe that sin is transgression of the law. Now he asked, if sin is transgression of the law, why does Christian sin? If there is nothing else, why, why do we still sin? But we see, at the end of the day, what gives us confidence is that Christ, our creator, he calls for our worship. People have worshipped too many things in this world. And that is why in the book of Isaiah 42 and verses 8, it says God does not share glory. And that is why he is looking towards us that we may worship him. And for as a people, we should ask ourselves, why should we worship God? And the answer is because he is the creator. I told you the scenario I had, I, I managed to be representing the wife because I, I was the I'm the closest friend to the family so when we, we, were, we, are, we are going to the mock I was the one who was going to identify whether this is our body it has never come to I, I never thought itafikia kiasi ya kwamba nitaingia mochari na bado naambua wewe ndio una identify then when I was looking at this uh, my friend na mwangalia na najiuliza because he was in his smiling face now ninauliza Mbona my friend, yani hawezi pumua, is it lil hapumui? Like, like the way our kiongozi said, that most probably we say, ni yara muiritu wa musha. Lakini ukweli ni kwamba, until you realize the depth of love of God, we will not fear to face the future. And, and with that, that is why Christ, the creator, the God the creator, is introduced as the redeemer. Yani, he, is not, he does not own us just because he created us. But again, when we fell into the sin, he came and introduced him again as the creator. And that is why Paul says, we are in new creation now. Not I who live, but Christ who lives in who? In me. It is not me who lives. Creator is introduced to us as a redeemer. It was not convenient and comfortable for him to go to the cross. The same way, it is not comfortable and convenient as Seventh-day Adventist Church to go around and give the gospel of the good news, the messages of worshiping God. Because there is three things in the book of Revelation chapter 14. The first angel says, worship the true God. The second, the, the second angel says, being done. And the third angel is saying, the consequences of worshiping the false worship. And that is where we come from. We, we come in as a church. We are holding 
tunashika ujumbe ambao ulimwengu hawana and as readers i like our theme today i know our our reader atakuja kuieleza vizuri inasema ya kwamba it is our it is our eh, time to go something like that it is our time as a women we ought to understand our position as a church in the ministry of christ ni nini hiyo anahitaji ili tuweze kufanya last but not least remember our name is a declaration that christ the savior is soon coming He is coming in the world even today hawajakubali kumkubali you know nilikuwa nasema siku nyingine I, i mentioned it somewhere very, very, very lately i think it is three weeks ago uh, a very popular musician hit the world of the, the, the social media this time she was not giving a new release of album but again it was said she had a very grand wedding Then after she did, she did her wedding it brought a lot of interaction and conversation in the social media and the people were saying hey this mama is getting married for the seventh time wengine wanasema it is the fourth time wengine wanasema sijui nini but the interesting part which captured my mind there was something that was saying seven things we can learn from a kode living life unapologetically then my friend you could see the response of wa Kenya Wa Kenya they are kind of this is the way to go. The world today is teaching us if you are in the marriage and it doesn't work, you can walk away anyway. But we know as a church, the word of God says it is still death do as what? By the, the by the world today, kama kama ukiona amekuwa kichwa ngumu, you know, th- this thing they are coming little and to us. And that is why there is no possible a resolution we are going to get not unless we involve God and to our all battles you, you know sometimes when we teach people say but you you should bring facts yeah let the facts tuweze kuelewa i'm living in a toxic relationship my husband ananichapa what have you you know today you will excuse us my you see mnajua tu eh mnachukua dose kidogo kidogo hiyo nyingine mnatuachia eh sasa sikia sometimes we, we we tend to think because we have challenges with those whom we live with those are our partners sometimes we consider our problem kama ni sisi it is us who made mistake but i want to assure you hakuna kitu ambayo inatoka mungu nyuma alielewa the reason why you have that stubborn husband hey praise god hey, who you stubborn you remember abigail i'm not preaching but remember abigail abigail is introduced in the bible as the most beautiful woman And again the same bible con, 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 nini, inasema ya kwamba he had a very foolish husband. Do you know we have so many Abigail here today? Did Abigail die? Uh-huh. And why should you die? We are going to stand still knowing that Christ is introduced to us as the creator not only as a creator but as our redeemer and he's looking forward to redeem your family. I wanted to hear a big amen. He is looking forward to redeem your family. Let us have the joy in the road as Nehemiah say that the joy of the road the joy of the Lord is our is our strength the joy of the Lord is our strength God bless you Okay Asante sana Pastor Mary uh, sasa uh, ni wakati mfupi tutawapa ili muweze kuuliza swali kuongezea ama chochote kile unaona Pengine you are able to pick to share with us so that we can all benefit. Uh, the communication team kindly a microphone. Is it possible for it to go around? Okay. Pengine any comment? Any comment? Swali? Jambo la kuchangia? Jambo la kuongezea? Jambo la kupunguza? Eh pengine kuna jambo tumesema mbali alistahili utukosoe. Kwa hivyo mambo yote yako shwari. Jambo moja tafadhali. We just want to hear a comment from the uh, congregation. Please. A comment yes. Thank you. Uh, yes. Mpatie microphone pale.
inafanya Amen. Asante sana kwa kuongezea. Ni wakati wa kukaa macho, ni wakati wa kuacha kulala sababu wakati wa hukumu ni huu na tumeambiwa tunastahili kuabudu nani. Uh, kulikuwa na mkono mwingine pale. Yes, tafadhali. Alafu nitaomba one gentleman also just to comment. Tafadhali, the gentleman so that we can feel the warmth of the men in the house. Happy Sabbath. Happy. Happy day. I am uh, encouraged by the lesson sharing and I just, uh, my takeaway is that um, the Lord is calling us to be women of, of, of worship. He's calling us to be worshippers yeah. of the Lord, not just on Sabbath, but to live a life of worship every single day, every single minute. Even as we have challenges, we know that he will give us victory. In fact, he has already given us victory. And so I want to share one verse that encourages me so much, and that is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 57, um, that says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we know that we have victory in Christ, then we shall worship him daily. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. A gentleman, Frederick Nyaga, kindly say something. Microphone, please. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, I was reluctant to stand up because it's a women's day. And uh, the way I'm dressed, you can guess I'm a man. So when you look at uh, the call for worship, it says, fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. If we are keen enough, and we are talking about the three angels' messages, to be taken to the entire world and at a very high speed, this, this first message is taking us to which commandment? Of the Ten Commandments, which commandments talks about God being the creator in six days and resting on the Sabbath? Fourth, so the first angel's message is a global message for us to take to everyone to start worshipping this God and resting on the Sabbath day. Even if we come here as women and the drivers who came as the men who came as drivers, unless we tell the whole world to worship on Sabbath day, the message is not yet preached. So before we talk about the, the Babylon is fallen and that uh, you are going to take the wine if you do not worship God, we must tell the people the correct day of worship is not tomorrow and it was not yesterday. 
It is when? Today. May God bless us. Thank you very much. Just one last chance for anyone who has a comment. I don't want to lock out any comment. Any comment? Thank you. Thank you so much for the input. So um, uh, we are, we'll continue, or we should continue reading the lesson. And of course, as we go home, or as we ponder about this lesson, we should be asking ourselves, are we really worshiping the creator, our God, who is always close to us, who made us, and who is... Um, who we are looking forward to meeting as judgment is going on, are we on his side? And then our Redeemer, are we banking and making God close? Just to wind up the lesson today, just one verse, Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it reads, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. Are we banking on God as our Redeemer to make us new every day? May God help us. Thank you so much for your concentration, for your participation. And as we wind up, may God help us. May the Holy Spirit be upon us. Let's pray every day so that we worship the true creator. And when he comes, we may be in that great team that will say, here is our Savior whom we have been waiting for. God bless us. So I'll ask my sister Mary to come and make a closing prayer. Naomba tusimame ili tuweze kupata ombi. Na tuombe. Baba yetu urie juu binguni jina lako litukuzwe wewe ni muubaji wetu na umetudhihirishia hakika haujatuacha kamwe na maana jicho lako linakaa likiwaangazia wote wanao kuabudu tunakuomba kama ilivyo mapenzi yako jicho lako linapozunguka ulimwengu kote usitupite hapa katika ibada yetu siku ya leo katika kanisa hili la Kenyatta University tunashukuru kwa mwaliko wa kipekee ambao we mwenyewe ukaupa na ukatupatia nafasi ya kuja hapa tukiwa kama wamama na wazee wenzetu ambao wamekuja pamoja pamoja na wanafunzi wetu ombi letu ni kwamba siku ya leo iweze kuleta badiliko katika maisha yetu tunajua ya kwamba tumetenda dhambi kwa ajili ya kupunguza kiasi ya kwamba tunakupunguza kama matatizo yetu lakini siku ya leo tunataka kukiri ya kwamba tunahitaji nguvu zako ili tuweze kuendelea na safari hii ya imani Ni matarajio yetu ya kati unapofunuliwa sisi pamoja na familia zetu ambazo umetupa tukuraki mawinguni tukisema huyu Yesu ndiye tuliyekuwa tunamgoja hebu hili liwe ni tumaini letu leo na siku zote kwani tuomba kwa Yesu aliye mkombozi wetu amen Koristas karibu Oh friends, do you love Jesus? Oh friends, do you love Jesus? Are you sure you love Jesus? And why do you love Jesus? Because he first loved me. That's the reason we all have to love him. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. After that wonderful lesson, uh, we welcome you to praise and worship as we wait for the next program. We are going to introduce ourselves now that we have full house of choristers. And I will start from my extreme left. You tell us your name and your church. Happy Sabbath. Happy 
day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Sharon Kirui from Silom Church. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Fiona Ward from Siloam Church. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Aileen Mima from Nairobi Central Church. Amen. And I'm Line Toande from Lovington Church. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We are going to start with song number 102 Swahili. Nyimbo za Christo 102 Mlangoni Pamoyo. It's not in the church hymnal, but if you can get access to the old hymns, those who have phones, or maybe if you have the book, it is song number 566, 566, There's a Stranger at the Door. So song number 20, uh, 102, Mlangoni Pamoyo. <laughs> Tumesikia mbiu 108 Tutaimba kwa kizungu 340 
As a host, you have a lot, and we thank God for the opportunity. Uh, right now, in session, we have our students. That is the medical student and the engineers. They are here with us. Uh, so when you see them, wakiwa huku huku, ni madaktari wetu na maijinia wetu. And we have a communication to pass to them. Kindly allow us, man, atapata nafasi ingine ya kuambia. That's why we have our elder Zaire with us, our elder on duty. Kindly elder, karibu sana kwa matangazo kidogo. Mbarikiwe. Okay. Happy, happy Sabbath. Happy. Okay, thank you very much. Just as Pastor Mary have said, uh, we are sorry for uh, intruding into your activities of today, but we just want to pass some few announcements. Let me just pray. I'll do it very quickly. Let's believe and pray. Our Father, what never now, mighty God, we come before you this honor to full time. Even as you pass your announcements to your people so that they may add unto them, I pray that you may be with us. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Okay, just as uh, Pastor have said, I'm Paul Zaire Omondi, uh, one of the uh, students and uh, the elder who was on duty this week. And uh, I just have got some few announcements to remind our team, the members who are around, uh, the engineering departments, uh, medical, and uh, uh, you can see church is not full because the majority of us are in long holiday. So the first announcement, just reminding those who may not have been uh, attending to our services, uh, we have got our ongoing Bible studies on Monday and Tuesday, always from 5 to 6.30. Uh, it will be taking place in the church or in the CID grass. And uh, again, we have got singing sessions on uh, Wednesday and on Fridays. As uh, On Friday, it will be from 5, and uh, on Wednesdays, it will be from 4.40 p.m. So be attending. Uh, then there will be a church board tomorrow. Uh, to the church board members who are around the church board tomorrow from uh, 7.30 a.m. here in church. So let's keep time. By 7, we should be around so that by 7.30 uh, we begin and we'll be done as quick as possible. Then uh, finally, uh, we have got an announcement from uh, the children department, that is the adventurers department. And uh, here's the letter which reads, Greetings in the name of our Lord. I would like to bring to our attention there will be an event that is the World Adventure Day 2023. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, and it will be held here in, uh, in Kenyatta University. And those who will be attending are all adventurers within Central Nairobi Station. And uh, Kusda adventurers are inclusive. So the children in Kusda Church, the parents, you can prepare them. And uh, uh, so that the activity will will of the day will be planting fruit trees. Uh, and requirement of each adventurer child who would like to participate is to pay or to register cash 200 for seedling transportation from Ruiru prison facilitation and certification. So there will be certificate. Therefore, further communication will be made on the same by Sister Nicole. I don't know whether Nicole is around. Nicole, you may just try so that the parents may be aware of whom to reach. Sister Nicole Odiambo, uh, maybe she's not around, but I know they know her. So I hope uh, we'll let our children to share in this amazing experience. So let's all be blessed, and uh, we welcome you all to Kusda, and uh, have a blessed Sabbath uh, till evening. Asante Nisana. Okay, let me just pray to close it. Father Lord, once again, we humble ourselves before thee this time. We say thank you for this far you brought us uh, at this wonderful time. Even as we continue the rest of the activities of the day, I will just pray that you may bless us. Uh, you may be with the facilitators of the day, the choristers, uh, the sermon speaker, and everybody who is going to take part in this 
today's activity. Bless us all together till evening. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Okay, have a blessed Sabbath. We continue with song number 340, stanza 3. Jesus saves. Stanza 3. Sing above the battle's side. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Swahili 149. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the English um, number. It's not in our church hymnal, the new one. Kuawake Yesu 149. 149.
for the doxology. Be silent. Be silent. Almighty and loving Father in heaven, honor and glory be to your name, Father. Thank you for the miracle that you have done for us to gather together here as a family of God. Thank you for this special day that you anointed for us, that we are going to worship here together, Lord. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit that you may consecrate this place for us, Lord that your angels will minister before us. We have come with so many burdens. Thank you, Lord, because you are present to receive them in your own hands. Speak to our hearts. Make our cups to our floor with your blessings at the end of the service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you know our names. You even know the number of our hair. And you are going to minister to each one of us, especially as an individual, until you meet our needs today. Thank you, Lord, because you love us. Thank you for your blood at the cross of Calvary. Thank you because you are counting on us for your ministry. And thank you because you have made a new home for us. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I will bless the name of the Lord at all time. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord. And together, let us exalt his name for the Lord is good. Amen. And all the time, Amen. oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Has anyone tasted about God's goodness? Let me see by the show of hands. Wow, at least to meonja utamu wa yesu. Nandiyo maana tuko hapa. We are really, really uh, grateful to be here today. And once again, we want to thank God for the opportunity to have uh, AWM, that is in Central Nairobi Station, here today with us. And we are really, really much honored. I'm here to do the invitation. Is it welcoming? Welcoming, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, I know most have uh, just joined us. My name is Mary Mburu. I'm the associate chaplain here at Kusta. And we are really much honored to host you today. Uh, together with that, we have our own whom gave us this uh, privilege and they hosted us here. Uh, in our church, we are comprised of student, large number is the student body, which uh, for this time they are not with us, most of them, because they are in their own holiday. And that is how we ended up to this venue, because if they were here, they always feel the capacity. We couldn't have chance if they were here, but thank God we have taken the advantage. All the same, we have our student from uh, the School of Engineering and Medical School, they are here with us. 
and you want to honor them, to, to appreciate them. I really uh, pray that you may stand up for church recognition. These are your students, young, and, young daughters and sons. They are here with us. Kindly stand up, my students, at least for church recognition. Wow. Wow. The, you could hear that amen. So these are our students. When you meet them around, when you meet them around, see them be introduced as doctor or engineer. Watawambia majina yao kikamirifu. Tuna, naomba mpungie kanisa mkono. Yeah, what do you say, church? Yeah, we are really thankful for you accommodating us here. They usually have their services where, when we are not here. And we really thank God because they gave us this opportunity. All the same, I serve with uh, our senior pastor. That is Pastor Kigundu Dwiga, doctor. He's not here with us, but he sends his greetings. Mumezi Pokea. Yeah, together with that, we have our patron who have worked tirelessly to see that this meeting is successful. Our patron, that is Professor Omoyo. Kindly, I want you to stand. I saw him somewhere. I think he's... Okay. Okay, on behalf of uh, Professor Omoyo, our patron, I can see Dr. Araka is here with us. Dr. Araka, kindly stand up and wave to the congregation. Well, thank you. I wanted to mention that Professor Omoyo has really helped us. You know, we communicated earlier, ya kwamba kukuja KU razima ukue pre-booked. Yeah? And we were requesting for names and the ID, which became very, very difficult to some of us. But for Professor Omoyo made sure ameongea na institution because they are guidelines. Na akarusi watukawa hapa. So we owe him a lot for us to be here. Nininamini ya kwamba hakuna mtu wamesumbuliwa kwa gate. Hama kuna mtu wamesumbuliwa? Uh, mmekuja vizuri. You owe Professor Omoyo uh, kumpatia thanks na tunashukuru. We have our community members. Ya community members kindly. Tunataka musimame. Kando na staffs. Tunataka community members musimame. We have quite a good number, I believe. Yeah, from that end. Wow. Wow, this is great. These are our community members. We are really, really happy that also you accommodated these women today. And I want you, in your honor, kindly wave to the congregation. Wow. This is, I thank you. God bless you. I, I, I mentioned this as a mission site because I believe this is our first time to have AWM uh, meeting in our church. So we are really, really privileged. Na nimeona hata wengi tukona uniform, tunashukuru. Uh, tena, we have our staffs who work in this institution. And I can see uh, uh, in the congregation we have the professor, that is Odigi and the family, Professor Odigi and Professor Aris. I don't know whether we have... Dr. Araka, still you can stand. The other staffs, kindly. Oh, kindly, kindly. Oh, Doc, kindly. Our staffs kindly stand up for church recognition. Wow. Even Elder Clifford, okay, thank you. Thank you, Doc. We are really happy that you extended your love to us and you allowed us to be here. What do you say, church? Our watu wakona program kali sana. Ninayama kukua hapa na tunashukuru. Thank you very much, Prof. We are really grateful. Uh, we have our children, uh, members of the community, Mora, Mora Simameni, Watoto simameni, simameni, simameni. Aya, sarimieni watu, pungia kanisa mkono. Wow, those are our children and we really thank God that our church is growing. Also, we have this church to require privilege that the church irijipanga yenyewe. We have our elder, that is our first elder. That is Abira together with his team. That is why you see tukona ashas wengi hapa. Walijipanga even in my absentia. Yeah, they knew I was uh, facing a trial moment, but I'm really happy they have made this day to happen. So, Elder Abira, on behalf of the readership of the church, kindly wave the congregation. Wow, thank you. He is an elder, an ordained one. Unajua nyi mmezoea kina elder nyaga. Hapa mambo inabadirika. Sawa, sawa. Having said that, uh, we have our women, at least wengine mmewaona, but I don't know whether purity is with us. And together with Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Bonnie, Mrs. Bonnie kindly, Quinta. 
Yeah, I don't know. They have really, really organized us and we really appreciate your work. Uh, having said all those remarks, tunataka tuwakaribishe kwa mkono mkujufu. Hey, turn to your neighbor. Mwambie karibu sana kusta. Feel at Jesus' feet. Thank you. God bless you. It is my honor now to introduce to us our own, our own able reader from the station that is Central Nairobi Station, our own able reader, Sister Margaret. Margaret Gatia comes from Lovington Church. She's the one whom God has ordained to be in the position this time. And we really thank God for the effort, for the zeal she has to, to the work of God, and that is why this has come to, to reality. And I know she will introduce her team. So kindly sister, karibu sana, tunapo enderea na mkutano wa siku wa leo. Najua ya kwamba tuko na pastors wetu, amidistas. We have pastor's wife. Let me, before she comes, allow me to, intro, to introduce pastor's wife whom we have here today. Wenye ambao tuko na wawa, wake wa wachungaji tafadhari. Naomba msimame kama mkombiongoni mwetu. Wow. Natafuta Mrs. Maangi. Kwani ulibadilisha nguo? <laughs> Mimi nakutafuta na nguo. Yeah, we are really happy. Mrs. Maangi is mother to Maangi. Maangi si mama. And this is also a uh, wife to Pastor Maangi. And we have his son here. He's our little comedian. <laughs> na na tunampenda sana. Tunampenda sana. We are really happy to have mama. And by the way, even daddy will be ministering to us in our camp meeting. So, family ya Mrs. Mangi, we are really, really grateful for supporting Kusta. So, na wake wengine wa wachungaji Mrs. Gedenji and our pastor there. Pungieni kanisa mkono. Asanteni sana na karibu sana. Viongozi wetu wako hapa, mkubwa wetu wa station wako hapa na sisi. But it is my honor to introduce to you our reader Margaret. So that I endere na hiyo introduction ingine. Mbwana atubariki. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na nilisikia tukiwa hapa tushaganye. Sidio. Nyasai bel. Mwadha ni agosho. Bea muno. Wacha ifike hapo. I just want to thank God in a very special way when I look at the sanctuary and I'm seeing all of us here. May the name of the Lord be glorified. Amen. And we want to praise God because over and over again God is faithful. And that's how we are here. And so may the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to guide each one of us even as we continue. Uh, like you have been told, my name is Margaret Gatia. Jesus is Lord and keeper of my soul. Feel at the feet of Jesus. And um, at this particular moment, I want to welcome those who came after the lesson discussion. Welcome and feel in the presence of the Lord. And let us worship and fellowship together. Brothers and sisters, if you ever want to grow spiritually, to grow spiritual muscles, never miss such a gathering so thank god that you came and feel that this is never going to be in vain it is a day that will never be wasted it is going into the books of remembrance we praise god and give him all the glory and therefore just to set in the fellowship mood choristers kindly let us all start let us all start and greet as many as you can. They say to be spiritually healthy, you must greet at least and hug at least eight people in a day. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Let's stand. What a fellowship. Greet as many as you can. Divine meaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting hand. Leaning, leaning, save and save you from all our life. Leaning, leaning, 
Thank you. You can have a seat. Amen, amen, amen. So, uh, I now want to take, the mood has changed, hasn't it? To God be the glory. So, I want to, be, to take this opportunity to introduce ourselves, to know who came and how they came. So, I want to start by introducing the district leaders and then they'll bring to us their people. I start with the Lovington, Lovington District, charity begins at home. And Lovington is made up of Lovington Church and we have a new baby called the West Lads. Lovington, please start. Westras, please start. Wow. Hallelujah. I will request uh, Sister Maange to wave to all of us. Praise the Lord. That's Lovington. Then I want to bring to us uh, my deputy. I'm the central station leader. My deputy is Hannah Dongo. Hannah Dongo is coming from Westras District. Hannah Dongo, kindly wave to the congregation. Tell your flock to start. We want to see them. Groreland and uh, Kitusuru. May the Lord bless them where they are. <laughs> then I want to bring to us our secretary, the secretary for the station, that is our sister Elizabeth Colos. She is from Nairobi Central District. Sister Elizabeth, where are you? Your frock? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we can see the foot soldiers. May the Lord bless you. The next district is past Parkland District. The leader is Jacqueline Oshieng, and she's the assistant station. She's, she's the assistant secretary to Elizabeth. I was told it's like Jackie is not here with us, but we have park lads. Let's see park lads. At least she is represented. She, oh, they are here in great number. You are most welcome. Karibuni sana. Then the other one is Kahawa District, and we have our treasurer, Sister Ellen Waidela. She is the leader of that district, Kahawa West. Kahawa West District. Sister Ellen, where are you? Oh, you, <laughs> you are the people who have the, who have the spirit of humility. Kindly, your frock. Kahawa West District is made up of Kahawa West Church, Kahawa Tumaini, Kahawa Congo, Kamete Church. Oh. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you know they are also represented at the pulpit. May the Lord bless the, 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 the foot soldiers from Kahawa West District. Then we have Siloam District, and the leader there is Sister Cynthia Abiero. Sister Cynthia, where are you? Oh, there you are. Where is your frock? Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God for, for Siloam District. And they are also presented at the pulpit. We praise God. And Siloam District is made up of, uh, made up of uh, Siloam Church, Maloloi Church, Zimmerman Church. Hallelujah. Then we have Northern Bypass District. And the leader there is the one who bears my mother's name, Beatrice Baswati. 
Sister Beatrice, where are you? Oh, here she is. Your frock, Sister Beatrice. The churches are Calvary, Calvary Gardens Church. There is Greenview, Kiamobi Church, and Mebre Church. Northern Bypass District. Wow. Praise the Lord. And they are also represented at the pulpit. Then we have Kusda, that is Kenyatta University, and the leader there is Purity Jerry. Purity, where are you? She's our host. She could be up and about. But who is from KU? Oh, there she is. <laughs> KU? Who's that? Oh, they are there. Including Quinta. Quinta, <laughs> she has come. Sister Purity, you can wave at us on behalf of your frog, your foot soldiers. May the Lord bless you and thank you for having us on the ground. Sister Quinta, we thank God for you. Um, Kusda is made up of Kusda Church and then there is Gilead Church. Then I want to bring to us Sister Esther Kalaja from Safed District. Esther Kalaja, are you with us? Oh, there she is. Where is her frock? That is Safed Church, GSU Church, Lualaka Central, and NYS Church. Ooh, there are many. To God be the glory. Then we have uh, we have Sister Florence Juma coming from Balaka District. Florence Juma from Balaka District. Florence, where are you? And there she is at the back. Oh. Okay. Okay. That is Baraka Church and Great Hope Church and Jadaile Church. Amen. The foot soldiers are many. We thank God for your being here. I don't know whether I have left anyone out and they came. I think we are here. So we know who came. Feel most welcome. Feel at the feet of Jesus. Now, before I sit down, uh, I want to bring to us a few announcements. It is always good to take the opportunity when it has, a, it has come. So we have uh, on the 4th of June, on the 4th of June, and take it home to those who are not here, we are going to have a prayer breakfast at Central Nalobi Station. And this breakfast will be at Sloam Church. Uh, Sister Cynthia, you are waiting for us. Kindly start again. That will be our host at Sloam Church. That will be the 4th of June. Kindly broke that date. And the breakfast will be starting from 8 o'clock. It will be from 8 to 11. Uh, you can see, Sister Cynthia, that, that will mean that we are starting a spiritual emphasis week. If you have looked at the calendar, uh, the GC calendar, the General Conference calendar, 10th of June is spiritual emphasis day. And so we want to prepare for that day by having a virtual week of prayer. And it will be starting in the evening. We shall communicate the extra time in the evening. Kindly purpose to just be there. And if your guardians have not been behaving lately, kindly pray for them so that they can cooperate. We shall have that week of prayer. And our guest speaker will be Mrs. Babala Hashaba. She will be our guest speaker for the entire week. 
Then we go back to our churches and we have our physical Sabbath with the leaders that, with the guest speakers that you have invited. Am I clear? I mean, the Lord bless us and prepare us for that week. I'm looking forward. Then on the 2nd of July, 2nd of July, we have Community Impact Day at Kamete Prison. Details will be communicated through your leaders, but block that, again, that date again. 2nd of July is Community Impact Day. Something else that we need to know is that each church is expected to send 500 shillings being registration fee for the station. So if you haven't given us a charge, kindly make sure it is received, the 500 bob is received, and our treasurer is Helen Waidira. So 500 bob uh, for coming, I mean, uh, for every church to register. Now, again, uh, I just want to remind us that the reason we are here is that we can flock together. And if you remember what we are saying this year is that Jesus is coming soon. And if Jesus is coming soon, get informed. But how can two walk together unless they agree? So we are here to know one another. So that when we go into mission, it, and it shall be in, in, the, in, in spirit and purpose, and we are together. So this togetherness is very, very important because we must walk together and work together for Jesus Christ. Each one of us getting involved. It is not by default that you put the, you put the, you put the uniform you are wearing. This time loud, we must touch hearts for Christ. And therefore, we must get to know one another, and then we are in mission together. May the Lord bless us as we prepare to carry out the Great Commission with the singleness of heart. Before I say more, I want to now welcome our director, our station director, Pastor Jack Ogeda, to greet us. Thank you so much, Yongozi. Na wasalimu katika jina la Yesu, buwana sifiwe. Praise the Lord. I am delighted and happy to stand before you this morning to welcome all of you to this special meeting, the station rally for the ladies. You look so beautiful, in nice uniform. May the Lord bless you. Uh, my work here is very simple. I'm um, to invite, I'm um, to introduce the clergy who are in our midst. And I want to ask, is there any clergy there? Clergy in the meeting? Any clergy? We don't have any. Thank you. Ah, okay. Can you stand? Can you stand and wave to Misha Mungu? Thank you. Our pastor is coming from Lovington Church. Thank you so much, Pastor, for joining us here. Now, I also want to introduce Central Kenya uh, Conference officials who are in our midst. I know we have leaders from Central Kenya. Can I see them stand? I hear our treasurer is here. She is part of this group. Treasurer from the Central Kenya Conference. Are you there, Sister Leader? Yes, she's my member, actually. Thank you for coming. Can you wave? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kiongozi. Sister Lida Gat is the treasurer for Central Kenya Conference. May the Lord bless you for being obedient and attending such meetings. Uh, allow me also to welcome leaders from the union. I am told Sister Sibia didn't come alone. Sister Sibia alikuwa na escort kubwa kutoka union. Biongozi kutoka union. Uh, Joan and any other naona kiongozi wa education, please can you stand? Can you stand biongozi how? Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Let me start with Joan. Joan, can you wave? 
Yes, my leader, our education director at the division at the union, uh, we work together at Central Rift Conference, and here you are. Can you just shout your name and greet the, the meeting? Thank you so much, Sister Joyce Chariot. Now, uh, before I come to the pulpit, allow me to introduce people who are very special also in this meeting. There are men who have accompanied ladies in this meeting. And they have come in large number. If you know you just accompanied a lady, Kwa Sababu Huyo is part of your rib, Ebus Mama. Very special people. Yes, can't you see them? Can't you see them? Ebu mutupungi mkono. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. Na kwa yao, let me invite my friend and my elder Chris Ongera, our salamia kwa niaba, your very special man. Elder Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much, my brother. God bless you. Now, uh, allow me to introduce the pulpit party because uh, I want to introduce the sponsor for women ministry department at Central Nairobi Station, and that is uh, senior pastor, Pastor Gidinji. Pastor, can you stand and say something? Thank you. Allow me also to introduce the lay representative, that the person who represents the laity in the entire central, uh, Nairobi Central Station, and that is Sister Lois Ngenye. And uh, of course, our host, uh, Sister Mburu, just to wave again. Thank you so much. She's our host here. Kiongozi Wetu Station, Women Ministry Department. Again, just to wave. Thank you. Having done that, now allow me to introduce our speaker of the day. Our chief guest who will speak to us is none other than the Women Ministry Leader at the Union, Sister Sibia Mienda. I just want her to stand and wave. She will have enough time to speak to all of us. Can you stand and wave? Otherwise, may the Lord bless you. May this Sabbath be a blessing to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Before I do the scripture reading, um, our pastor, our director is leaving. And before he leaves, <laughs> he's actually landing somewhere and his uh, time is not, uh, is not on his side, but we shall release him to go. How many are sending pastor with the greetings? Before he goes, I would uh, like to call Sister Priscilla Keta. Priscilla Keta, my sister, where are you? Please bring a hard check to Pastor. Say amen. Pastor, God bless you. Now you can greet everyone you meet on the way. Okay, now I request that we take our Bibles. We, uh, the word of God this morning is coming from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1, we shall read verse 6 and 7. Deuteronomy 1, verse 6 and 7. 
and 7. If you're there, say amen. Amen are few, meaning we are still not yet there. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So let's read together. The Lord, our God, spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have de dwelt long enough at this mountain. For seven, turn and take your journey, and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. And the Lord bless the leading of his word. I request now that we rise. We shall sing from Nibosa Christo, number 58. Choristers, please take us through. Fifty-eight. Nibosa Christo, fifty-eight. Number fifty-eight.
instead of this. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it needs to get up close. Uh, this is time where we go into prayer. And a time when we go into prayer, this being an AWM Sabbath for women, I want to appeal to only three types of women as we go into prayer today. The three types of women are illustrated and we have their stories in the Bible. The first I would want us to be able to appreciate and acknowledge is Tama. I want to appeal to the Tamas we have today. People who have been neglected. Ladies who have been literally abandoned. Who have been judged by double standards. Who have literally been thrown out and not recognized, not acknowledged. Not because of their own doing. Maybe widowed and their in-laws do not appreciate what they are going through. Maybe single ladies who their family members, their friends don't have understand what they are going through. I want to appeal to the Tamas today. Somebody who is a Tama, somebody, a lady who understands that really nobody understands them. Only God understands them. My second group of ladies I want to appeal to today are the people, ladies in this congregation, the layers, or if you want, the Hannahs. You are in a family where you're not loved, where other people seem to be loved and appreciated more than you. You are in a family regardless of all that you do. All you do is get people to scorn you, to discredit you. People who do not appreciate that you put your all in all in that family. Those are the second group of people and ladies I want to appeal to today. Those ladies who regardless of how even God created them like Hannah without children not being able to bear, give back, People who like Leah, who were born and then we are told by the Bible that she was cross-eyed. Regardless of the physical well-being, regardless of the way you are created, people take advantage. They scorn you. People laugh at you. People discredit you. The third group of women that I want to appeal today as we go into prayer are the Abigails. Abigails, I know we have men here, so I don't want to say ladies who have been married by fools. But that's what the Bible says. That neighbor, what was neighbor's name? Yes, you are in a marriage and you're doing everything godly to keep your family together. You are doing everything you can to have your children know who God is. You are doing everything you can to have your family, to have your husband, to have your parents, to have your siblings know who God is. But they still do not appreciate and know who God is. I don't know whether you fall in one of those categories because that is the, the three categories I want to pray for. If you are burdened, if you are neglected, if you are rejected, those are the tamas, double standards. If you are in a marriage where you are scorned, you are laughed at, like Penina who was laughing at Hannah, you are hated by even those that surround you, your in-laws, it could be your family members, it could be your parents, it could be your Friends, they don't appreciate you. They make fun of you. They rebuke you. They put you down. They want you to remain down there because you're good for nothing. And that's what they convince you. And the third category of where you are trying with all your effort and energy to bring all those around you, your family members, to God as I 
girl. You want to do what is right in God's sight, but they seem to continue to slip away. If you happen to be in one of those three categories, and you would want we pray together, please just stand up. Only those three categories we are going to pray for. I want to take you to the book of Psalms 27. I want to take you to the book of Psalms 27. And this might be more doing us justice. It's not doing us justice. Psalms 27, where you are going to say and declare with your own mouth that you are only, and I want to read verse 4 where it says that you're going to. Okay. I didn't have to shout. I just needed to say this isn't working. Yes, let us, when we read from the book of Psalms 27 verse 4, David said that I only request you, Lord, of one thing, to dwell in your house all the days of my life, to gaze upon your beauty and to seek you in the temple that regardless of the situation the position regardless of where you are you can be able to seek god you can be able to gaze at his beauty and you will live in his house forevermore as we go into prayer i want to read the last two verses of the same chapter which says i would have lost hope if I did not believe in the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait upon the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait upon the Lord. I want you to learn to wait upon the Lord. If you fall in one of those three categories, and this day you are saying, Lord, I want to dwell in your house. Lord, oh God almighty, I want to gaze in your beauty regardless of where I am. And I would want to be able to seek you daily in the temple. As we go into prayer, I just want to remind each one of us regardless of where you are what you're experiencing what you're going through just pray god to give you three things in your life as you soldier on you need to have faith in god in all that you do no god has not left you he loves you and he still cares for you i would want you to persevere as you go through the trials and tribulation, as you go through the difficult dark hole, because God has not forgotten you. The last thing I want you to diligently seek God. Don't leave God. Let God continue to guide you. Let's have a word of prayer. Oh, Father, we are women here. And we know it is because of your great love for us. You saved best for last. When you created us and you looked and said, surely this is good. We know you created us as women for conclusion, for completion, and Lord, for you to be fully manifested in us. Lord, we are downtrodden. Lord, we are struggling. Lord, our hearts are heavy. Lord, we are in a position where sometimes we don't know what to do. But this day, we come into your presence. As we days in your beauty, as we, Lord, want to dwell in your house all the days of our lives, and as we seek you, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Give us peace. Give us wisdom. Direct our path. And may we not lose hope because you tell us that we shall see your goodness in the land of the living. And as we stand up here, we are saying, Lord, we will testify of your goodness in the land of the living. Regardless of what people say, people do, people think, we shall testify of your goodness, of your goodness in our lives, in the land of the living. And as we wait upon you, 
and you tell us again to wait upon you, we will not lose hope. Bless us. Remember us. Draw near to us. And may we be your servants as we have come into your house to seek you that we will live for you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We now come to God to worship God through our giving. And uh, before we call the archers, when David was given a chance to give to God, in the book of uh, First Colonicos, the book of First Colonicos 29, verse, chapter 29, verse 14, the Bible says, but who am I? And who are my people? That we should be able to offer, to offer so willingly as this. For all things come from you and of you, of yours own, we have given you. Who am I that I can give? You came to this world empty-hearted and you leave this world empty-hearted. What God has given you is for you and also to give for his work. And when we sang the song that we have already sung, song number 68, the last stanza, to me say, Madam again. Nitakuwa na furaha nikimuona kuweka miguuni pake waliovutwa kwa ajili ya kazi yangu na roho wake. Tafurahi nikiwaona. Ni wakati wa kumtolea Mungu zaka na sadaka na ulisha nauliza ashes the ashes to understand. We have ashes from KU who were prepared for this. Did we have from from women ministry? Sister, did we have from him in the ministry? We have the ashes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear loving Father in heaven, we acknowledge how we came empty handed into this world. And because, Lord, you have given us what you have given unto us. We only want to return to you as tithe and offering. And today we may return as money and kind, but let alone we, we will see so many souls that has been brought to you through our sacrifices and offerings. Lord, I commit each and every giver before you. May you bless us. And most of Lord, may you draw us closer to you and may we offer our hearts to you so that we and the work that we shall do will be ushered into your kingdom when you come. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I call upon the, the choristers to come when we continue to sing song number 55 in Kiswahili. Tutashangiria wenye mavuno. Number 55. Nimbo za kiswahili. Song number 55. Wow. 
Wacha nitangaze kitu kabla muja endelea. Uh, uh, tunapo toa sadaka na zaka, ulie na baasha, andika jina lako vizuri, andika sadaka ya kanisa lako vizuri, Kom, ikiwa ni zaka na sadaka, andika hapo, ikiwa kuna wengine walio na ile pesa registration waweza andika hapo, yeyote ataka yandika kama KU treasurers wataangalia ili ya kwamba baasha hizo murudiwe. Please, if you want to give, light your name very well, light your, your tithe and offering, and if at all you have something for the women, you can write there down. The treasurers will give back. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Stanza two.
we we now invite the person having the children corner Hello, happy Sabbath. It's time for children. Someone, may all children come up front as we sing the chorus. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the tells me, Jesus to him belong. They are required. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, I know. Yes, Jesus. Yes, I know. Bible tells me so. Guest is seated at Kai Chini Watoto. Come and sit here. Hello, children. Hello. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Are you really happy? Yes. Who can tell us how their week was? Uh -huh. How was your week? Fine. Fine. Anyone else? Jason? My. It was fine. Yes. How was your week? My week was good. His week was good. Now, to Ahuku, how was your week? Tell us how your week was. It was fine. It was fine. Mine was fine too. Uh, my name is Teacher Lamek and I teach the primary class. Wangapi ni wa primary hapa? Wangapi ni wa primary? Mora say hi and be for primary class. Hi, my name is Ariela Mora. Thank you. Her name is Ariela Mora. Now, I want to, before we begin, I want us to pray so that we begin our Someone who is going to pray for us. A boy. Be for a boy. Who was that? <laughs> Come forward and pray for us. You. Kuja. Yes. So when I want to pray. When I want to pray. I say. God. Loves. Me. Thank you, Lord, for this hand. We are going, we are going to tell this story. Bless our teachers and parents. Help this day to be fine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. May everyone say, Amen. Now, our today's sermon is about a day of celebration. Can we say a day of celebration? Do we celebrate birthdays? Yes. How many? Wangapa mwai celebrate birthdays here, Wapa? Almost everyone. What else do we celebrate, children? We need to celebrate apart from birthdays. 
I can see hands on this side. What else do we celebrate? Easter. Easter holiday, very good. Yes? Party. Party, good. Uh -huh. Yes? Cupcakes. Cupcakes, okay. Interesting. Christmas. Christmas, okay, interesting. Uh -huh. Yes? Wedding. Weddings. Okay, one more last time. Sabbath. 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 Can we shine for her? Shine, shine. shine for Jesus every day. Wonderful. Now, yes. Now I'll give you time to talk again. Now, in the beginning, for six days, God was doing something. For six days. Who can guess what God was doing? In the beginning, for six days, God was doing something. Something wonderful. Yes. Creating. God was creating the universe. Who can tell us what was created on day one? Okay, a lady. Adam. Adam. Yes. On day one. Yes, Karen. Light. Land. Okay. On day one. What was created on day one? Day and night. Day and night. Wonderful. Ah, day two. What was created on day two? Day one. After day and night, then we move to day two. Uh -huh. Derek. The sky. The sky. Wonderful. Uh -huh. Day three. Someone to tell us day three here. What was created on day three? Uh -huh. Yes, Peter. The sea. The sea. Anything else that was created on day three? Uh -huh. mm, the animals. Animals. Not really. Uh -huh. day three. Trees. Trees. Uh -huh. And on day four? Day four? Two things were created on day four. One to root the day. I want to rule the night. Uh -huh. Kiran? Land animals. Land animals? No. Uh -huh. Heavens on the earth. Ah, really? One thing was ruling the day, providing light for the day, another one was providing day for light for the night. Sun and the moon. Sun and the moon, the heavenly bodies. And um, on day five, on day five, Yes. Because the, 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 the animals. Animals, wonderful. Ground. <laughs> Ground. Okay. Day five. One thing. One thing remaining on day five. Yes. Sea creatures. Sea creatures. Yes. Now, children, uh, on day six, the last day God made who and who? Let's shout. Let's shout. Adam and Eve. Now, after the beautiful things that God had done on uh, the last day, on the last day, what happened? God rested. God rested. God rested from all his work, from everything that he had. Good. Yes, let's put our hands down and listen. So on the seventh day, God rested from his work, from everything that he had created. Now, children, I said our topic is about a day of celebration. Can you say a day of celebration? A day of celebration. Now, on Sabbath, God rested from his work, sanctified the day, and on this day, he instructed Adam and Eve to worship him. He did what? He instructed Adam and Eve to do what? To worship him. So on this day, God made it a day of celebration for both Adam and Eve. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Now, Adam and Eve used to meet God and they used to share about the stories of the good things that the Lord has created. Can you look around the, through the windows? What beautiful thing can you see that God had made? 
Uh huh. Any beautiful thing you can see around through look through the windows? Yes. Flowers. Flowers. Flowers are beautiful. Yes. Lovely. Butterflies. Butterflies. They fly. Uh huh. Tree. 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 Trees. Wonderful. Any other thing you can see around that God made? Yes. Trees. Trees. Yeah. So they used to walk around with God and celebrating. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands down. Yeah. So Adam and Eve used on Sabbath day, they used to meet God. They used to walk around the Garden of Eden and celebrating the wonderful things that he had done. So, so. Now, but something happened. Something happened that annoyed God. Adam na Eve walifanya nini? Mungu akakasirika. Uh-huh. Alifanya nini? Yet the fruit that God said he should not eat. Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. Sindio? And then what happened? God did what to them? They died. <laughs> they died. <laughs> now, after they ate the forbidden fruit, God Yes, let's keep quiet. After they ate the forbidden fruits, God cast them Are you together. And the relationship, their friendship with God was terminated. Are we together? Yes. yes. Now, for them to restore their relationship with God so that wakwe marafiki tena na mungu, he said, uh, for you to be my friends again, then it means that you have to obey my Sabbath. Sawa, sawa. He said, you have to do what? To obey my Sabbath. So the Sabbath was like a day of celebration to them. And because they used to do a lot of work throughout the week, like what do we do throughout the week? Well, during the week, tunafanya nini? We go to school, Cindy. Mommy and daddy go to work, Cindy. And then when we come to church, we meet our friends, we fellowship together, and do what? Sing to God and worship the Lord. Cindy. Yeah, so God made the Sabbath day so that it can be a day of celebration and we commune and talk about the beautiful things he had made. Are we together? Yeah, so as from today, as you're, as you're celebrating anything in your life, remember the Sabbath day is do what? Is a day of celebration. As you're winding up, Someone to read for us, flash for us, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, very fast. Who is going to read? A uh, lady now, very fast. Megan? And you listen? Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. You want to know what about the Sabbath? Let's keep quiet and look there. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work creating that he had done. Amen. Now, we say, children, on the Sabbath day, God made it holy and he sanctified it because he had rested from all the work he has done. Now, as we wind up our story, let's know that we worship God when we celebrate his Sabbath. Can we say, we worship God? We worship God when we celebrate his Sabbath. It's Sabbath. Uh, let's rise up for our word of prayer. Let's rise up for our word of prayer. Tuamuke tuombe. Everyone, when I want to pray, I say, God loves me. Close our eyes. Thank you, Lord, for this sermon. Dear Father, Lord, you made us know that your Sabbath is a day of celebration for us and we should enjoy and look into the good things that you made and you created for us. Dear Father Lord, as you're going to sit, bless us, bless our parents, be with us in the next program in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go back and sit. Okay, as children goes back to their seats, we really want to praise God for the far he has read us and because our senior pastor is here with us, he's going to introduce our speaker oh it is introduced already okay sorry for that i know as a preacher it is very hard when you are given a pulpit at one but tunaomba mtuvumirie kidogo 
ya hata nyinyi mnajua ile masaa mlikuja lakini tunashukuru ya kwamba tumpe mhubiri wetu pastor Sibia wakati wake ili aweze kutuletea neno la Mungu ambalo Mungu amemtayarisha naro. Wangapi pamoja nami sasa wanakaribisha mchungaji? Karibu wa Mungu. Hebu na tusimame kidogo. Around the corner. Around the corner. Around the corner. Oh, you are very attentive, eh? <laughs> Thank you so much. We can sit. Just wanted you to be freshening again and give yourself time so that we let's pray. Heavenly Father, time belongs to you. We are your children. It is time on the clock, but you can still renew our strength so that we can listen to your word. All that you have blessed us since morning, let it not disappear from us. And even as you continue filling our cup, may we be willing to hold the cup so that it doesn't fall down. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the first thing I should say today, I want to appreciate so much for the leadership of Central Nairobi Station. I want to appreciate our women director, Sister Jacinta Loki, who invited me to come and speak here today. I think she was here in the morning for those who came early, and she did our presentation. She has gone to another station for a meeting. I want to appreciate our leader for the station, and all those who have made it possible for us to have this meeting. Actually, women, it's time to stop mediocrity and do things which are decent. So I really want to appreciate the leaders for choosing a very decent venue. Yeah, sometimes you choose venues even the service is just a problem. You suffer being in the meeting. But now ladies, tell me, what will hinder you from listening to the word of God today? Unless it's yourself, isn't it? Yeah, if it's yourself, we'll pray for you. So that uh, those obstacles can disappear in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to bring my family greetings. I am married. I celebrated my 30th year. Last Sabbath on 29th was my anniversary for 30 years of marriage. I'm still continuing. <laughs> uh, we have been blessed with four children. Our last born is 19 years old. And he told me he wants to come to KU. I don't know whether his dream is coming true. He's waiting for the slots. I'm a mother-in-law of one son-in-law. I'm waiting for the others. So that is to bring you home that the person speaking is not a foreigner. She's one of you. Who knows the pain of being a mother and the joy of being a mother? The pain of being a wife and the joy of being a wife. If you don't combine these two things, your life is not normal. You must have the two. There is a time to laugh and there is a time to cry. 
For 30 years, I will tell you, you must share the time. You must cry and you must laugh. So when we speak, we speak knowing that we are women, we are men, we are young people here, but all of us, God has said, I know the plans I have for you. Amen. To give you a future and a hope. That is all we stand for. One thing which I thank the Lord for today, I was here, I think, 20 years ago, <laughs> my sister, how many years could this be? Yeah, I should be around 15 to 20 years, maybe less than 20 years, yeah, between 15 and 20. When this university employed a chaplain for the first time, they sent an interview, you know, for people to come and do interview to be a chaplain for a public university. That was the first time when Zwani was the, the boss here. And when the interview was done, my brother managed to get a chance to be the first Adventist chaplain in this university. And those days, I was still not on the pulpits. So I used to come here and stay with him because he had a house. But we didn't have a church. We used to worship somewhere. You keep moving. If this hall is not being used, then you get another one the next Sabbath. And I remember I preached one Sabbath here. But as time went by, and as they were praying, and uh, you know, you should, you should know have a good relationship with your bosses. So the boss accepted to give Adventist Church a piece of land. And I came here when they were doing groundbreaking and starting the church. But the brother I'm talking to is retiring next year. <laughs> uh, so I, I wish one time he'll come and see how big the church is. That is the last time I was here in KU compound. And uh, I want to appreciate that today again, God has given me a chance to come here and worship together with you. I know at the end of the day, very few of you will have a chance to stand here. So I hope some leaders you have taken pictures to show them how they look from the wall. You look wonderful. Even when I'm preaching, I feel strengthened, Lord. I think some people are asking, why didn't you wear the uniform? My provision tells me the leader should look different from the congregation. <laughs> that is the only reason. I had no other reason. I love my uniforms, I wear them, and I enjoy wearing them. So I didn't want to be among others, because today I'm on the pulpit. But uniform is power. But I'm telling you one thing, if you ever tempted, if you ever tried to move out with this uniform to the city of Nairobi, Nyayo, and do a big meeting, our uniform will have a thousand meaning. And we are going to do it this year. We are not waiting for the crusade before we go to Nyayo. And I'm looking for powerful women who want to make this thing happen. Yes, we have women who can make things happen. Women who know where they're coming from and where they're going. You know, some women, we have to lead them. They still don't know their, their, their road they are treading. Some of them are treading on a very high ground. And they think it's a valley. But today, before you live here, you will find your direction of your life. You can't just be there. If you look at the whole city and the whole of this big place that God has made for Kenya, and you are the only women who have decided to stand out for the Lord, are you not wonderful women? We can't be counted outside. We are leading and we have to let other women follow and know that there is sweetness to serve the Lord. 
We are going to pray today for our ladies who have reached the comfort zone. Each one of us as uh, procedures in life, we try walking. The first time I preached in Nairobi, I was still a district pastor. But do you know what, ladies? That's why I like mentoring women to serve the Lord. If I were not mentored, I couldn't have stood here today. Those leaders who were in Nairobi stations those days, they used to call me and give me the pulpit. And they used to tell me, make sure you revise your English as you come to Nairobi. I told them my English is well, but nowadays it has gone halfway, of course. And you have to work hard. We are giving you the pulpit. Those are the friends who mentored me when I was growing. I grew up in Shaurimoyo Church. My sister moved to Moja Church. We started to Moja Church as a shade. And after that, I disappeared from Nairobi. And I went to study somewhere. So when I came, those ladies still remembered me because I used to preach as a youth. But they told me now, I told them my English is even better because I went abroad. I'm coming with the English. But when I came, they were translating again to Kiswahili. So, I remembered, preaching is not about language. It is communicating the word of God. And we must all be courageous to communicate the word of God. Bring somebody here to preach even in Kikuyu and we translate as long as they are filled by the Spirit of the Lord. So today as we sit here and listen, let us just listen to the word of God. Because the Lord is going to speak to you today. You are going to move out of your comfort zone to serve the Lord. Last year I was preaching in a congress in this world of uh, eh? Kenya. And some lady was asking pastor, up to now you are not tired. I was telling her, and you, are you tired of uh, serving the Lord? I said, but me, I'm old. I said, I'm not tired. I'm doing my 29th year in my ministry. I am even stronger than yesterday. Nikichoka ninaenda wapi? How can I run away from the presence of the Lord? Right now, if I stop working, I will still drive, I will still eat, and I will still move. So that is the on, not the thing which is making me to serve the Lord. I don't have to preach and work for me to survive. So, if somebody has even become a mother-in-law, do you think I will sleep hungry? Won't I get an pesa? Won't my husband continue keeping me and feeding me? Yes. I'm not saying this because I have some millions, but I know I will still live. There are those days when I started working, we were being paid 2,500 shillings. And they stopped employing me for five years because I was a woman, a young lady right from college because I graduated at 22 years old and they said now what do we do about this woman in Kenya I was the only pastor in this union and a very young girl I looked a bit they looked at me thinking I'm, I'm confused can she go to another thing but I knew the Lord had called me I'm sharing this testimony not because I want you to see me be I know God has called you and you may be seated somewhere here and people are scorning at you, you wake up, you go down. You want to rise up, and you feel embarrassed. You go down again. And they tell you, such a big lady, why should you go wearing uniforms and uh, preaching from the pulpits? You know, rich women and good women should be a bit calm, and even the way they talk, and the way they walk, they cannot be found in this way where we shout. But I'm sure the Lord is calling you. And the Lord will not disappoint you. He has not disappointed us for all these years. He's still with us. And the Lord will move with us. 
until the day when he shall say, your work is done. I told my husband when I die, but I've written it down because he may forget. You know, men will easily forget and start burying you very fast. I told him when I die, even Mrs. Mangi should be my witness that day, make sure you attend my funeral. When I die, please give my women time to organize themselves. Because I know they will come in big masses to bury the soldier. I saw this when my mother died. I had to extend the time. Lucky enough, I was the one who was having the satini. What do you say? That thing you are given when you put the body in motion. The permit, eh? Because I'm the one who had it. I extended time because women told me, give us time. And when we were burying my mother, the only man who had a chance to speak was the preacher. <laughs> Everybody was sunk in the women. With their uniforms and with everything. Even no man was supposed to carry the body. Now, if my mother was buried like that, what about me? We are women of God. Hallelujah. Let us not be tired. But you know what? Every time I fly, I don't like this COVID because it denied me chances of going to the U.S. every year for congresses, for crusades. I used to fly and think, I have been telling people to take time to bury me. What if the plane goes to the ocean, will I have a burial? <laughs> I am making you to come at home. Not everything we think will happen. Hallelujah. Some things we are just imagining. And some of you are laboring for things which will never happen. Because even so, sometimes I say, it may happen that I don't have a burial for myself. Sure. You can't go get somebody from the ocean for burial. It may happen that Jesus will come at my lifetime and I don't have a funeral. Those are things we do on earth. But the Lord knows the plans he has for us. To give us a future and a hope. Do you know how many people we buried and ceremoniously tuning Corona time? Even their own families could not attend. Some of you are living a life of slavery. You may die during another corona and nobody will bury you. You better work hard for the Lord because it will only be the Lord who is present with you during your burial. Yes. He will be the only witness to see that you were buried. I saw some women here remaining in Nairobi with their children and the husband was going to be buried. Hile mamba mukonayo ati munarusha udongo. Nani alirusha? Nani alirusha udongo ndi omukazika hiyo kaburi? Hakuna? I think now we are home. And if you are planning to leave us after lunch, please ask me to pray for you. Because after lunch, we have a better meeting than in the morning. God bless you. Let's go back to our text. I think we had a good reader <clears throat> and we read our Bible text. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 to 7. The Lord our God spoke unto us in Horeb saying you have dwelt long enough in this bound. Turn and take your journey. Our title for our someone, it is time to move. It is time to move. Can I hear an amen from this side? Where I'm born and where I come from, people have to generate your strength when you are preaching. It is time to move. Hallelujah. There is time and season for everything. That is in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Time to plant time to harvest, time to live, time to die.
time to laugh, time to cry. But now we are talking about movement. It is time to move. The slogan for these five years. Lucky enough, I've not seen any woman with that uniform, which is written, I will go. Is there anyone here? Can I see a hand? Okay. If I put you as a demonstration, don't worry. It is written, I will go. Even our theme for the Queen Queen I'm says, Pastor, I will go. I have been preaching and challenging this theme. The theme is very good. I will go. And what does it say at the end? I heard you say some slogan again. Get involved, eh? Jesus is coming. Now, since the team started, and I saw a big launching, I saw conferences launching the team, I will go with t-shirts, and even women now started wearing uniforms saying, I will go. But my worry is, I don't want to go so much into the because of time. When you say, I will, it is something which will do what? Happening now? Going to happen? Is it today or tomorrow? Yes. The slogan was good. And because it was in the future, since we launched the theme of I will go, some people are still waiting to go. Because when you ask them, they say, Pastor, I will go. Another year you tell, they say, I will go. I tell people, can you change this theme and say, I am going. Because this I will go is becoming I will go. It's not becoming a reality anymore. Now people are on a standstill. They are in the mood of going. You know when you go into a flight, there is that mood of starting. Eh? They keep announcing, they remind you that there is death, there is a belt under the seat in case anything happens. They tell you what will happen, you just, mm, you blow it in case you fall on the sea and all those things. And then the flight will start moving on the ground, trying to get momentum. It moves for some time. And you are told to switch off your phones. That's the time you remember it's live and dead. You have been taking photos and uh, posting when you are entering the flight, but when you are told to switch off your phones and take care of where your belt is, you remember it's live and dead. So some people I see in that momentum, eh? that momentum of taking off. Eh? They are going around the Jomo Kenyatta airport. <laughs> but they are taking two years. The flight is not going onto the air. Even if you go to the flight and they are taking the momentum down here for one hour, what would you say? And going to Mombasa is just 40 minutes. Yes. Sometimes you wake up here on Sabbath morning, you, you get at 6 a.m., by 6.40 you are in Mombasa, you are the first one in the church. Now my theme today says, it is time to move. We have taken momentum for so long. Not only in the service of God, even in our lives. The Lord wants to accomplish something in your life. He wants you to fly, but you are still taking your time on the ground just because you are in the flight. Ukiangalia unaona ni madirisha ya ndege. Kwa nini nisonge? Unaangalia hapa, unaendelea kupiga mapicha na kupost. I see women they are good. They post everywhere. Sasa hizi tuko rally, tuko mahali, tuko mahali. Eh? Hata mnaenda matanga na uniform, amuombi, 
amuimbi wala amopeani chochote hiyo uniform ilienda kufanya nini what is the need of that uniform It is not I will go. It is time to move. Hallelujah. Ask yourself before I go to service. Ask yourself how much you have troubled the Lord without moving. How much? The Lord brings you and akuweka kwa ndege vizuri, ticket uko nayo, kila kitu uko nayo, but you are the pilot of course. You are the pilot of your life. You keep taking the ndege around the field and seeing the buildings in the airport and seeing the wazungus you bring it again you switch it off you start again How long will you linger on this mountain Some women I don't know You know the opposite of move is what stagnant You see them but their life is stagnant. They are eating, they are dressing, they are going for work, they are giving birth to children, they have husbands or they don't have but their life is stagnant. The fact that you are alive and walking does not mean your life is moving. You may be stagnant. Young people these days say it is walking walking dead isn't it you are walking but you are dead The Lord is speaking to who The Lord is speaking to the children of Israel So point number one. the Lord spoke I told you our title is time to move and our text is Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 point number 1 the lord spoke it's the lord speaking how many of you has the lord ever spoken to you just ask yourself don't raise up your hand as the lord have spoken to you Some women tell me pastor I'm praying I'm praying they keep praying until they don't even give time God time to speak to them You pray you pray you pray can't you be silent and listen At least when you pray reach a point now you listen for meditation to hear what the Lord is saying Alafu mnaniambia but pastor God's time is the best do you know it do you know that time Your timing you know God's timing is the best. Do you know the timing because you have never spoken to the Lord? So you don't know the time. You are only choosing as a slogan. Mungu Mungu tu anajua wakati wake. Unaujua wewe? Because the Lord will let you know. The Bible says, I will not hide anything from you. The Lord will not hide. I have seen people who are not pastors and church elders who even know they are going to die and they are not sick especially these old people na kuambia sasa mimi nataka unitie wachukuu wangu wote na wageni wangu nataka kuwaona na sio mgonjwa akishawaona kesho anapumzika it is you people you don't talk to god you don't listen to what he is saying i mean let me ask you a simple question How many of you remember what they dreamed last night? If you ever dreamed, do you remember the dream? At least Nebuchadnezzar could remember. Who was not a Christian. Even when the Lord speaks, we don't care whether he spoke or he didn't speak. You just wake up and go to your errands. You don't even meditate what was the Lord saying? What was it? Somebody comes and speaks to you. He tells you something, unasema tu ni sawa, nimesikia. We have no time to listen. We have no time to ponder on what the Lord is speaking to us through his people, through his word, through our dreams. 
The Lord is speaking in many ways, but do we listen? The Lord has something to say. The Lord has something to say. Listen. Pay close. The Lord has something to say. Even the children know that they have to listen because the Lord has something to say. Hata watu waseme, lakini wamalize, God has the last word in your life. And God is saying something in your life. As an individual. Shida ya wamama, nikiongea hivi nikimuhubiria anaanza kufikiria mtoto wangu angekuwa hapa sikie maneno si ule mzee wangu angekuwa hapa sikie maneno you think the lord is speaking to someone else can you bring your brain here i am speaking to you and the lord is speaking to you the rest when you reach home god will help you to speak to them so you listen first and the lord will use you in your family The Lord spoke. That is point number one. He spoke to who? The children of Israel who were from Egypt, the land of slavery. Why did they go to Egypt anyway? They had forgotten the Lord. Ukiona mama ameanza kuingia Misri Do I continue or I stop there? <laughs> Let me speak of these ladies who got a transfer to Nairobi recently from diaspora. And when they come to Nairobi they find hey, kumbe hapa Nairobi H is a number. Unashtuka. Unajua huko hata mtu hajali vile unakaa. And then you realize if you go to a, a beauty shop They'll give you mafuta according to your age and then you start changing the diet unashtuka you concentrate now on your physical punda si punda people start telling you you are so young what are you doing there we should show you where young people go and have rest you go to misri you go to egypt very easily that's how the children of israel went to egypt now ukifika misri Nyama utakula lakini matafari utapiga. Praise the Lord. Nyama utakula lakini matafari utafanya nini? Utapiga matafari. Walipiga matafari wa kila nyama mpaka wakasema Mungu. Meat or without meat take us from this place. These children of Israel God sent Moses Moses went he did what the Lord told him to do and he brought the children of Israel from Egypt and they started their journey to the holy land but the journey is not a smooth journey and i want you to get that point even if you have come out of Egypt I know many of you have come out of Egypt. Si mnajua mahali mlikuwa mnapiga matafali before you were converted. Eh? Mungu ni mwema. I tell people God is good all the time. When I was in primary, shule yangu ilikuwa inatangulia drama because of the greatest dancer. I didn't know how to dance. And if it were not for the Lord who called me, I am telling you, let me stop there. Hata nyinyi kuna mahali mumetoka. Na kuna mahali mulipiga matafali kweli kweli. Lakini thank God hiyo matafali haikukuangukia ukufe. You are here today. Today you are here. And the Lord has brought you from Egypt and you are starting your journey to the Holy Land. And your journey has started. The first encounter was the Red Sea. So when the Lord calls you, it's not a walk over. Nasema sasa 
Mambo sawa sawa. <laughs> yesu akiwa nami mambo sawa sawa. Hiyo ni wimbo. Lazima kuwe na sawa na lazima kuwe na ngumu. Haleluya. You must kick the journey. They started the journey, the first encounter the Red Sea. But thank God. There was the Lord had already prepared a way of escape for his people. Moses struck the waters. The waters divided and the children of Israel started journeying. And we remember Miriam sang. I am talking about a chosen generation. The chosen men, chosen young men. Young men who are here, engineers and doctors. I am telling you. I am no regrets that I want to be young again. When I was young, I preached more than now. I spent my youthful age in the best way possible in the church. Your youth meetings, youth preaching. So if you waste your life now, you will regret later. Let not your career carry you away from the Lord. We are journeying. This is a career. But you are a person whom God says, I know the plans I have for you. A career is not all the plans. This is part of a plan. There is a big plan even unto salvation. The children of Israel, they crossed the Red Sea. They came. They started the journey across the sea. They were thirsty. So unajua huko Egypt kuna juice. Unaulizwa unataka kunywa gani? You don't pay for it. You know that. You don't even pay for the juice. You don't pay for the meat. So they came to the desert. There was thirst. <laughs> There's a time when we were doing a crusade for commercial sex workers. And those who were converted told me the only thing we are missing is taking free juice and free meat and free meals. Nimeokoka lakini lazima nitakula sukuma na ugali kila siku. So these children of Israel, they started remembering that in Egypt there was water. God told Moses, hit the rock. Water came. They drank. They were hungry. There was manna from heaven. Every day. They were not working now. They were resting as they journey. You know, when God brings you out of Egypt, he doesn't just leave you. He walks with you all the way. He walks with you. The Lord walked with them. But you know, lo and behold, they were so tired with the manna. Let's imagine manna was rice. <laughs> it was white manna, isn't it? Rice every day, rice every day. Walisema, Musa, ebu turudishe misiri. Hata kama kuna matafari ya kupiga kuna nyama. I think you are monitoring your life. You know, I'm not preaching about some people. I want you to, to look at your journey. Since you came out of Egypt, how is your journey? How is your journey going on? How is your going? Sasa poa. Kweli ukuna poa? Mambo si sawa. God said, let the quills come. They ate. Unajua ukiwa... Once upon a time wakati tulikuwa tunafunga shule. Ukifika nyumbani lazima mzazi anunue ile kadawa inatoa constipation inaitwa haki. <laughs> Ilikuwa lazima mzazi aweke hino karibu kwa sababu mkifika unakula hii, unakula hii kama mmechinjua kuku you want to eat the whole thing. They ate the meat until it came out of the nostrils. And even some died. Because of eating. But still the journey continued. Was the journey going to stop because some people have died? Hello? Ladies here. Hakuna siri sijui ya wamama sana. I have been these women from 2000 as a women director. I know you very well and I know myself. Kuna wamama wanasema, 
nikitoka hii boma hii boma iwezi kuendelea sijui vile itaendelea and you live feeling like if i'm not in this boma it will not continue these people died and the journey continued hiyo boma itaendelea ni wewe upange maisha yako na Yesu ukiwa hai uchipange every time we pass when we travel a lot yani sikujua wakati utafika wakati sanduku za mwili zinauzwa yani zinakuwa display unapita unaona ziko on display even the prices are tagged na ukipita unaangalia unasema ai siku hizi hata sanduku watu wanakufa wengi matanga imekuwa mingi do even ask yourself whether you will also reach a time when people will say matanga imekuwa mingi because of you those are reminders the children of Israel continued moving for 40 years in the desert 40 And we are told they could have taken one month pasta to reach their promised land but the lord is so merciful hakutaka kupeleka watu mahali pazuri ambao wako bado na tabia mbaya kuwatoa misri haikumaanisha waliacha tabia mbaya misri walikuja vile walikuwa so the lord was you know with the hardness mnataka kupewa maji mnafanya Musa anagonga mawe mara mbili mnataka nyama mnakula mpaka inafanya nini natokezea na wangepelekwa the land of milk and honey so all of them could die it had to be a process so the process continued when they were at the age of canaan and still in the desert god gave them the ten commandments at the age of canaan at the promised land When they are at the age of Canaan the Lord made them to stay at Mount Horeb for one full year Mount Horeb they went to the mountain to stay to prepare themselves because they are almost closing Wow Finally when they stayed there Life became better than the desert where they have been walking. There was food, there was everything, even newborns were were already there people are enjoying a new life and you know when you are on the mountain you can view the land. Ni kama walipelekwa picnic trip to the mountain. They were even seeing Canaan from a distance. They were seeing where they have come from. The Lord took them to the mountain to show them this is where you have come from and this is where you are going. But life was so good at the mountain they didn't want to move. They didn't want to move. I mean they had even lost the test of the canon because everything was okay. Why should we move? The Lord said you have lingered enough on this mountain. Get up and start your journey. How long have you lingered on your mountain? Now that the Lord brought you from Egypt, he has conquered your battles in life, you have crossed the Red Sea, you have gotten water from the rock, you can get food from heaven when you pray, God provides all your needs. You are on the mountain. What else do you need? But the Lord says it is enough. Can I repeat the text? Because some of you may have gone to glory and to pray for us. The Lord our God said to us at Horeb. Remember Mount Horeb is very historical. This is where Moses was given the commandments. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring peoples in the Araba, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev, 
and along the coast to the land of the Canaanites, to the Lebanon, as far as the great river Euphrates. See, I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore to you. He could give to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and to the descendants after them. Some of you are denying your children the land which the Lord has given them. Because the Lord says, go inherit the land that I promised even to the grandchildren. How many of you are stuck? Mimi nikivutwa hii job, nimekufa. Nimeisha. That's a statement coming from a woman of faith. And a man of faith. Mimi wakinipika transfer kutoka hii kazi, nitaacha job. Can't move. Mume kondisha nyumba. You know when your husband has been paying rent in Hallingham, in Lovington, in Kireshwa, anakuambia mom, it's now time to move. We are going to where where can we choose? His father is a bit Kamuru. Kamuru is near, eh? I've not been there. We are going to Kajiado, maybe Xerian, Magadi. That's where I want to make our home. Hakuna shida. Utaenda peke yako. Mama nafunga virago anambia mtoto, can you tell your father, unataka ninyoe mtoto huko America, ni kuje kunyoa mtoto. Anaenda kunyoa mtoto na jawai rudi. You know we are stuck. We don't want to move. Who knows where the Lord is calling you to that Magadi to preach to the Masais? Who knows where the God is calling you to Kamuru area to preach? It's not by coincidence that your husband got land there. We was looking for land and this is where God showed him. Who knows why? But we are stuck in life. Some of us are stuck in our eating, in our lifestyle. Mimi siwezi kuacha hata mkifanya nini kama ni mbingu wacha ikae. Chakula nitakula. Some of us are stuck in our protocols. You know the way we do things. We can't get out of our comfort zone. When we tell women we can move out, we can go to Vamie Nairobi to eat a watu nyayo stadium. We feed the people, we preach to the people, we make us pray nguo watu wakuja wachukue na manguo. We go for community work in Abiwe. Ati watu waenda kunipiga picha mimi nikipeana manguo and I'm a judge, I'm a doctor. I'm a woman of dignity. Let me tell you one thing. When Queen Elizabeth died, so you know the story. She was a queen. Not very long. And she was being buried in a big way. But do you remember what the pastor said? Now before we lower her to the grave, can you remove her instruments of power? Can you remove the crown? Can you get the instruments so that she's buried as Elizabeth and not Queen Elizabeth? All these titles we are carrying, Women Ministries Director. Eh? Justice. Mama County. Eh? First Lady. Wacha ni wambie. Ngini tana muna hita gani? Wakili. Eh? Director. Medical Director. My son ya lianza kutijita engineer kiwa primary. Engineer. Eh? Eh? All these things, when you are being buried, we must remove the instruments of power. Remember, these things have cheated us. All these titles and all these things we have, they have cheated us until we think, you think our doctor breathes differently and our teacher breathes differently. We are a human being created after God's own image. 
God gave us this title so that we can use them. We can take advantage of them to reach the world for him. But now they have hindered us from doing the word of God. When we used to go to Langata prisons, I remember this lady was from uh, Maxwell. She used to open the prison for us until our church was built there because she was in charge of the prison. Now some of you, you go, you are being positions, you hide in the position, your position is not changing our life. But remember when you die, we shall remove the position. Hata wakili atuta kubali uzikuwe na hile kofia. Hakuna siku sarakali itakubali. Hile kofia inabaki nyumbani. Unaenda na nguo yako. We only have a short time to serve the Lord. We have been given opportunities to serve the Lord. Muzee atabaki na atahoa na huyo mama ataendeleza kazi ile ambayo ilikuwa ifanyiki. Si ndio? I'm not saying in bad in bad mood because even me I'm, I'm a human being. But I always know one day when I sleep the first thing the lady will come will not buy a car. She will only take my key. She has no reason to pay a car loan. No need. So I am using my car for ministry as much as possible so that nobody else will use it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even today I didn't come with my car. My sister Joan stand up and wave. Yeah. That is our honorable secretary in the office. I told her Joan, our car is so muddy. Unajua imebeba matobe. Unibebe. I want that car to work, work and break down in the ministry of God. Hallelujah. That is me. It depends on what you are doing. If I want to serve the Lord, see I'm working. Do I need to consult my husband whether I'm paying tithe or not? At my dear, unaonaje tulipe tithe mwezi wa ama tuache? Atingocha tumalize nyumba kwanza tutalipa next month. 
Ladies, we are not going anywhere if we are not listening to God rather than people. We are not moving. At my wife, you know I love you so much. Usienda hiyo vitu ya street ati mnaenda utoka utaniembarrass. Do you know who I am? Do you know my title? What will people think when they see you behaving like that? Wewe ngoja uone. And such women, most of them they die earlier than their husbands, most of them. I don't know why. Ask me. At least for this 30 years, nimeona mengi. Nimeona mengi. And usually these other women who come, they are sharp shooters. They come and they preach the word. They use that money for God. Kwa sababu unajua mzee akizeeka, sasa anaanza kuchukua commands about turn. You see, you know that. Now they will come and tell Muse, we are going for Dolkas, we go. Hata Muse and I'm drive to the ministry. If you can't take an initiative of moving, who will follow you? Can't you take a step, another step, until they follow you? Now you go as Muse, what do you think? Can we go? If marriage is becoming a hindrance, for you for ministry god will act because he needs you the lord needs his donkey the lord needs his donkey we have become donkeys for families and for people for long but this time the lord needs his donkey and he will send people to get the donkey here like today jesus told me can you go and get my donkeys to the work of the Lord. And I hear you get me. I have come for you. The Lord needs his donkey. There is a special work you have to do. Nani hapa atakuwa punda ya familia? Nani atakuwa punda? Are you pretending? Those people who come from where I come from. I got married before I saw my baby, I was given six babies to take care of. Because they didn't have uh, parents, those kids. So I started taking care of babies from another one year, na wengine kwenda juu, before I did my... Who has not become a donkey? Was I supposed to refuse and I'm in honeymoon or else things get spoiled? But there is a time and season for everything. It is time to move. If God has carried your burdens for all this time, and you have reached this time, why can't you move out and serve the Lord before it's too late for you? My sisters, you may be late. Because when I look at this, the next time we come for the rally here, we may not have all of you. Because some of you, would have gotten a divorce and they are no longer staying in Nairobi, so they cannot be in Nairobi station, central station. Some of you will be on transfer. Some of you may be, maybe no more, we can't tell. Or some of you, whatever may have happened. You know, today I'm speaking like this. Tomorrow, I'm on a wheelchair or no wheelchair. Tomorrow, you don't know yourself. Ladies, let me tell you, it's a shameful thing when you lose your mind. One time I got an accident from St. George's. We came for Congress, children. And I could not remember when I'm up, I used to stuka and I said, and then my mind goes, for almost a week in the hospital. And I could feel so embarrassed that I've not been on my mind and people are standing looking at me. And I told God, if you want me to have a, a handicap, I don't want a mental one. Choose another place. Give me my mind. I need to serve you. I got well. And the doctor was saying, I have never seen such a miracle healing. Because to remove a cloth from, eh? it's not easy. It came out in one week. I told God, chagua mali pengine, but ubaya shetani alisikia. Tukienda kitui na sisa kanini, awavie korold. 
and one part was affected nikaambia mungu sasa sitaki kuhubiri kwa wheelchair i want to stand up so these days i don't tell god another part i told god i need the whole body i need the whole body i'm not choosing a part i need to preach and i've had several of them but i tell god still give me time God has so been gracious to you. How many times have you seen death? Even without you knowing. You have just missed it narrowly. Do you know sometimes I drive and I miss an accident. I don't know I've missed it but I have missed it. You just you close your eyes and wait for the bang but it goes away. God has rescued your life so many times but you are still on the mountain lingering you don't want to move the lord says it is time to move move out of the mountain the children of israel they were in their comfort zone but see the lord wanted them to move some people think those women who serve the lord are sufferers how ni wale wanataka kutafuta mungu awasaidie We are not sufferers. We are queens in the name of Jesus. I am not I am not one of them. I am a queen of the most high God. And so you are. We serve the Lord because he has chosen us. We are chosen women and men of God, chosen young people. Who well, the God has called you as young as you are. I remember when my husband changed his career after finishing his first degree and started doing theology everybody abandoned him but he said i will serve the lord and he did it he's not tired up to now he's doing it but those who abandoned him are the same people whom we carried their children to care for them when they were no more <laughs> this life is a journey If the Lord is calling you, you must accept the voice of God. Or else you will be destroyed. Remember the wife of Lot. If the Lord is calling you several times, he's even pulling you out. The next thing you are becoming you are becoming what? a pillar of salt na ukihubiria mama mwenye ameshakuwa pillar of salt <laughs> your energy of course i'm sweating but i don't know whether this sweat can be transferred to that pillar of salt so that it melts for jesus the secret of life is to be at the right place at the right time Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 Be at the right place at the right time so that when God says move you are at your right place and you are at your right time so that you do what you move be at the right place at the right time Time is a linear thing time moves but time moves in one direction ni wewe unaenda ukirudi. Unaenda ukirudi, but time moves in one direction. And you think when you go come back you are growing younger. Unaenda ukirudi. Hata tukienda tutengenezwe young outside. Are we young inside? While humans on earth are bound to time god is not bound to time god is not if he has given you your time if you waste it it is gone for you god is not bound the concept of time those who are here are here they are learned friends here we understand time as quantitative time can be measured time is successful you know You know time keeps moving. It can be corporate time or it can be single time. 
But remember, time is limited to you and not to God. God is unlimited time. There are seasons, there are opportunities, there are time to accomplish what the Lord has given you. It is you to step out and use the time that God has given you. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 19, when God created, he created day and night. He separated time. Time is progressing. Genesis 1 14. In Luke chapter 2 verse 4. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 4. We understand how God created time and how time keeps changing for us and not for God. In the Exodus, these people continued their journey. Those who moved, they moved. Those who stayed, they stayed. But they never stayed to live. They stayed to die. Let me come to movement. I know you have understood what I'm saying. And we are sorry we started preaching late, but I want to finish here and start in the evening in a few minutes. Is movement in the mind or it should be physical? Or both? Or both? How many of us have been planning, I will go, but they are moving mentally? They are moving mentally, they are really roaring mentally. Okay. How many of you are confused? When do I start moving? Those of you who studied a bit of geography, do you know, do you see these wild birds? They, they move as a jeshi. When it comes to some season of the year, they move from even one country to another, or they move from one place to another as a force. They know the seasons and times. Look at the ant. The Bible says, consider the ant. It knows how to prepare the food for the winter. And you tell me, Pastor, I don't know when to move. Why don't you know? Abraham was told to move. He accepted to move by faith and not by sight. If you are going to move, you must take a step of faith. You may not, not have to see the evidence before you start moving. When I decided to go to train in theology, I was 18 years. And I said, I, for me, I didn't know I would be employed. I said, I want to know how to preach so that I start preaching well. Because my brother used to give me this book, The Great Controversy. And I said, okay, so my chapter, you summarize, unayelewa, unayenda, unahubiri. And that's all I used to do. But I said, can't I know how to do it better? I went by faith. And everybody in college told me, can you change your course? When you are doing counseling, are you okay? You know, is something going wrong? Is it because of your age? Sometimes they could go and take me to register me another department. They took me twice. I registered tomorrow I cancelled because I didn't know how to say. No, I only was there when my pastor was Cuba. Those I found in class. From Kenya, we had almost 30 pastors. So I am finding myself there. They were almost taking me for mental checkup, I think, but they didn't know what to do. You should move by faith and not by sight. Now when we are preaching, is it because we are seeing women direct or is it because you also have to go to your calling by faith and not by sight? What is a position anyway? Hata siku nitakufa, nitakufa kama sibia. That is it. That is all. Let me tell you, I have been preaching in many funerals. Sijawai kuona funeral wanasema, when Sibia died, she had uh, 
3 million savings in Stima Sako, and then in Mwalimu Sako, she had 1 million. In it way, yes, you can see. Yeah, can you see? Adventist Sako. Iyo ni siri. Wanasema tu, she was a good preacher. She even came to our church. Iyo vitu wata kabla ni kufe, imekua transferred. Abraham moved with his animals, whatever he could carry. Did God leave Abraham because he moved? No. Is God going to leave you because you are moving? No. Elijah was told it is time to move. Go to the spring. He went. When God is calling us to move, we need to obey the movement because it is the Lord who has called us to move. My worry is in the book of Revelation chapter 3 it says and time is coming when the earth shall be no more for the time of salvation has been closed. So this time is not forever. Let me close by saying, if you have no strength to move, like some of you may be unwell, you can use your means to move. You can use others, you can empower others to move. You can move the mountains when you are on your wheelchair, if you are willing. In one country, there was big rain. So you are seeing a lot of rain. And this lady, her house was on the hill, like a mount hill. And then there was water, the water was really going down. And those people at the valley, it was night. They didn't know. Around 4 a.m., people are sleeping. The water is going, the water is going. And she realized those people were going to be drowned. She started shouting. Nobody was listening. They even thought you, Mama Labda, and Wes were Memukuja. She was shouting and nobody was listening. But thank God, all these people down here, their farms were on this hill. Eh? Zangano. Mashamba Yangano. Mama Kasema Sasa ni How will I make those people to escape? Akachukua kiberiti, hakaenda kwa shamba yake ya ngano, hakawasha moto, shamba zikashiku wa ngano, and then people saw fire and they woke up. When they woke up, they found water is everywhere, and they ran to the hills. This woman burned her own shamba to save the village people at the valley. Are you willing to burn your body, your wheat shamba to save others? Is this not a way she was able to save people? When God takes you to the mountain, there is a purpose for you. Please, start moving out. Go to the Moabites. Go to other people who need to hear the Macedonian call. And the Lord says, I will be with you until the end of the age. May God bless you in Jesus' name. To Simame. You can bring our closing song.